I'm Matt Cavanaugh from West Side Story, and I'm here to answer your questions. So bring them on. Yeah, I did do community. You know, I never really got involved in theater until like high school. Uh, I was, uh, you know, I wasn't one of those kids that started when I was two, you know, and I've always done it. You know, I was a boy from Arkansas. I played sports. I, you know, watched, you know, Terminator movies and stuff, you know. I mean, I, I always sang. I always sang like in the church choir or school choir, stuff like that. Um, but I didn't really get involved until high school. Um, I was, you know, shy and bashful. And uh, my first show was a high school production of uh, Here's Love, uh, more well known as Mir Miracle on 34th Street. And I was like, you know, sweeping, I was a street cleaner and I was sweeping outside, you know, the curtain goes up and I'm sweeping outside and, uh, you know, uh, Santa Claus, Chris Kringle happens to walk by and I just happened to be whistling, here comes Santa Claus, you know. You know, I'm a pretty good whistler. That night, nada. Uh, I had never been so nervous in my life. Uh, it was my first time to be on the stage. I was the first person on the stage. You know, places, I'm there. The curtain goes up. Actually, I think the curtain opened. It didn't go up. The curtain opened. And you heard that. Of the crowd getting quiet. <laughs> I couldn't do a thing. I was so nervous. Uh, but that actually, I guess, was my first, um, first show. How did I propose to Jenny? Well, listen, if a man wants a woman to say yes, you buy a big fat diamond and you propose in Italy. So that's what I did. What's great about um, uh, being in love with someone who is also, you know, in the biz is that we both understand, you know, the demands on us, whether that be, you know, time constraints or physical demands, emotional demands. Um, you know, um, she's used to seeing me, you know, fall in love and kiss other beautiful women. And I'm used to seeing her fall in love and kiss, you know, handsome men. You know, that's kind of strange, but it's, you know, that's what we do, you know. <laughs> it's part of our lives. She has. Loco de mierda. Now, I can't quite translate that because per, this is a family website, but uh, it means beep crazy, you know what I'm saying? So that's what loco de mierda means. And, um, no, no, you know, I gotta tell you, uh, Hosa has tried to, and uh, Pecas, who is um, uh, our security um, uh, gal at the um, stage door at the palace, she tries to, I can't really get past, you know, buenos dias, you know, um, Ah, oh, geez, I even forgot. You're supposed to say, and you? I don't, and you? I forget how and you goes. And then, uh, I'm glad to hear that. I forget even what I'm glad. I mean, I'm terrible. Well, Corey, it was, uh, painful, uh, chafing, um, uh, stressful. It, it was fun. It was fun. We actually, uh, in rehearsals before we went down to Coconut Grove, we all went out to some, uh, some honky-tonk bar in New Jersey, of all places, but, uh, you know, they got a honky-tonk bar, I guess. And uh, we went out there and we rolled the mechanical bull, so that was actually my first time on a mechanical bull. Um, but then, um, at, in between the Coconut Grove production and the production here uh, in New York, um, I took a little uh, Texas urban cowboy trip of my own. I actually met the guy, um, I met Mickey Gilly, who, you know, that's the name of the famous club, obviously, that they're in. And this other fellow, I forget, I, I'm blanking on his name. But he's the guy who makes all of these mechanical bulls, the Toro mechanical bull that is, you know, like the mechanical bull, I guess. And, you know, late one night in Houston, uh, very drunk with those guys, and with actually the guy, um, I forget his name, but who was Bud, who was the guy that Aaron, you know, based the story on. He was this stud at Gillies back in the, uh, you know, uh, 70s. And uh, we all got hammered and uh, rode a mechanical bull. And uh, the thing is, with those guys, you can't really say, ah, hey, you know, I've had enough. And they're like, hey, get on there, do it one more time. And, you know, here's another beer. And, you know, you can't really say, ah, I think I'm good. I'm going to go home. I got an early breakfast, you know, want to read the paper or whatever, catch up on a book. It's not really that type of a situation. So that was a painful night, but, uh, you know, learning experience.
Hey, Brian, I have met Jerry. I have Jerry's cell phone. Um, he came by to see me the other, actually, well, well, I guess maybe it was six weeks, two months ago now. Um, he came by to see West Side, and, um, you know, we got to visit uh, for a bit in my dressing room. Jerry's a really interesting guy and a very sweet man. But yeah, we, we have a great time with Jerry. He's got some stories. He's got some really, really fun stories. Oh, Melissa, I'd play Gladhand. I mean, Gladhand's on for like, what, four minutes? He comes on, he kills, and he leaves. I mean, that's, that's the role to do. Oh, my first crush, Scott. Oh, man. Oh, man, I've had a lot of crushes. Oh, uh, my first crush. Well, there was this girl named Sarah in the, I think, like, the, maybe the first, second, and third grade. She moved away in the third grade. I do remember that because it was very traumatic. And at that time, remember that song? Sarah, Sarah. Remember that song? No time is a good. Remember that one? But, uh, oh man, that song was a big hit then. And I was in love with Sarah. I can't remember her last name. Sarah, Sarah something. You, uh, let, let's see, let, let, let's see here. Uh, if, 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 Joe Can if Joe Kennedy was playing Tony, uh, he, he would uh, sing uh, Maria. Um, I, I just met a girl named Maria. Uh, and, and suddenly that name will, will never be the same to me. Uh, I've just kissed a girl named Maria and, and suddenly I found how, how wonderful a sound can be. Uh, this is terrible, this is terrible. The advice that, I, that was given to me was, if you'd be happy doing anything else, uh, do it. Because there, this life, you know, is so sort of unpredictable. There's no rhyme or reason to it. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, there's no sort of guaranteed formula for success. Uh, but, you know, if it's truly your passion and truly what you want to do, dive in fully. I mean, I, I would... I, joined, uh, I think it was called Stage and Screen, is that, was that the name of it? Where, you know, you'd get, you know, a couple of plays, you know, each month. Uh, I would order, buy every, you know, CD I could just to read as many plays and listen to as many, you know, soundtracks and stuff as I could, just to learn as much as I could. You know, read the history of theater, learn about, you know, um, you know, directors that are, you know, working now, uh, those that came before us that are emulated today. Um, you know, really, uh, immerse yourself in all of the workings of the theater because you never know where it's going to take you. I mean, everybody started out as, a, out as an actor. Um, some people continue to be actors and some people move on to different things. So, you know, I, I think immersing yourself in all of it, uh, you know, can only uh, help you, uh, you know, succeed in all areas of the theater. And also, you know, continue to learn more and more about yourself, you know, through <laughs> stuff that isn't, uh, you know, theater, you know, uh, that's, you know, reading, you know, books, you know, reading the paper, um, uh, traveling, uh, falling in love, you know, just diff different things that are, you know, that, that is life, you know, so that can, you know, enrich you so that when you walk onto a stage, you're a full person that uh, people want to, you know, see. No, buy a poster. <laughs> If I were an animal in the wild, Hank, I don't know, I mean like, like a monkey? I mean everybody wants to be a monkey, right? You know, you see the monkeys, I mean that's one of my favorite things to see at the zoo. Who doesn't want to be a monkey? You know, you know who doesn't want to do that? I mean they have a lot of fun. And they always mess with you when you're at the zoo too, you know, you mess, you know, you're watching them and then they'll, they'll like pick their butt to you or they'll throw something at you, you know. You know, they, they have a great sense of humor. I like a monkey. Harvey's, Harvey's a trip. Harvey's great. Um, I love Harvey. Um, Harvey's a lot of fun. Uh, Harvey loves to... Harvey loves to have fun, you know. He loves to keep a room light. He loves to keep a, you know, a room, uh, 
you know, uh, fun, you know, so, you know, like Catered Affair was a show that was, you know, pretty heavy. So, you know, he loved to keep, you know, a room, a rehearsal room or a theater or backstage, you know, uh, light and fun so that, you know, there's some balance <laughs> in life. Um, you know, and Harvey's always got a great joke uh, or, or a fun story. He's always got great tunes playing. He's a big opera buff. He's always got, you know, Maria Callas or someone playing in the background. Uh, and he loved to play poker. I love to play poker with a Harv. I'm missing you, Harv. We gotta play some poker. I wanna take your money, Mr. Finkelstone. No, I wasn't hesitant about taking it on at all. Um, uh, I wanted it. I wanted the role. I, I, I went in the audition room and, uh, you know, I got it, you know. Um, it is a uh, beloved uh, show and a beloved role. Uh, and um, and that, that's a great thing. You know, it's great that people love it. Um, it's great that, you know, people love it so much that we're sold out every night. You know, I've been on the other end of the spectrum where things aren't quite as beloved and people don't come see your show. So, as an actor, you want people out there watching the show. And, um, no, I, I, I was, you know, very eager about taking it on. It was, uh, you know, uh, challenging, daunting at times. Because um, it is, it, it's, it's a big lift. It's a heavy lift, you know, for, for everyone in the show. Either, you know, vocally or physically, emotionally. Um, uh, it's a heavy lift for all of us, um, but no, I, I, I wanted the, the role uh, badly. Hey Jeff, um, I would like to do, you know, an album, uh, uh, at least one. Um, I would like to do that. Actually, um, I have something, you know, uh, in mind uh, uh, right now. Uh, I actually have a few things in mind, a few different uh, 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 you know, ideas for either uh, you know a cabaret that could also make an album, and then uh, something that might be you know a bit larger for you know a uh, you know concert hall or symphony you know gig performing arts center type thing. Uh, so I would like to do st uh, something, um, and Jenny and I uh, would like to do something together as well. So we were uh, you know brainstorming uh, about the different things that maybe we could do um, together too. So yes, you can expect something, uh, you know. Hopefully not too far away. Hey guys, uh, thanks so much for your questions. Had a good time doing this. Uh, and I hope to see all of you uh, at the Palace Theater uh, to come see West Side Story. Uh, had a great time. Thanks so much. Bye.